So in my last full review of the 2017 Q60, I literally only had the car for an hour at a press event. Um, I had never driven the car with a direct adaptive drive, and really, for me to show you guys my full take on a car, I really need to spend more than just an hour with it. So this time, Infinity has sent me basically the same car for an entire week. I had a chance to test out the driver assistance tech, verify the fuel economy, really try out the direct adaptive steer, and see whether or not this car was worth the three-year wait that we had to wait when the Q50 came out uh, until you know they finally decided to redesign the coupe. So. Um, how do I feel about the 2017 Q60? Stay tuned, you're gonna find out. In this review, I'm gonna do some things a little bit differently. I really wanna focus primarily on the driver assistance tech on this car and the handling, the direct adaptive steer. I mean, you guys pretty much know this car now has a twin turbo V6 in two different flavors. I've got the Red Sport 400 with the company's all wheel drive system. It makes 400 horsepower, which is, if you're keeping count, the most power in this premium compact luxury coupe segment. How does it make the Q60 drive? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna make sure the drive mode here is in Sport Plus. We're gonna take this left here and we're gonna floor it. Oh, oh, oh shit! <laughs> All right, this car is still pretty damn fast. <laughs> so in terms of the, the motor, I have to say, this three liter twin turbo V6 still very much impresses me. Out of all the Japanese entries out there, the Infiniti has the best engine. I mean, Lexus just came out with a V6 tur uh, twin turbo for the um, LS, which no one has driven yet. Um, Acura has a 3.5 liter twin turbo in the NSX only, not in the mainstream cars. They still, all, basically the other two Japanese brands are using naturally aspirated engines. This goes head to head with vehicles like an Audi S5 coupe, a BMW 440i coupe, and a Mercedes AMG C43. All of them have boosted six cylinder engines. And the Infiniti has the most power on paper with that. Now, what kind of really makes the Infiniti its own unique car is definitely the styling. I mean, when this Q60 came out, it had all of the curves and lines that really made the concept car so stunning. Um, and I have to say, it still looks great, even though my testers is kind of boring silver color, um, which I actually think shows off the lines really well. I would prefer like a red or that blue that I showed you guys a couple or, or last year. Uh, I think this design's stunning. Love the full LED headlights with the LED turn signals. Uh, and overall, it really is a design that looks different, that attracts attention, whether you like the curves or not. <laughs> now there is slight lag off the line. It's very, very light, um, but once, once the turbo kicks in, this car will hit 60 in four and a half seconds. Basically as fast as everything else in this class. The Q50 sedan, the sedan version of this car, isn't really that much slower. It's pretty identical. Um, so in terms of speed, this is basically what you're looking for in this segment. Um, the seven speed automatic in this car does hold it back slightly. I mean, I've had my opportunity to spend more, a week with this car and you know, most of the times the seven speed auto is good. It's really when you're driving the car at 10 tenths, you're gonna notice that you wish it was a dual clutch. clutch. You wish it had, you know, better responses and sometimes it can be a little bit slow uh, to downshift, especially when you put your foot down hard. Now, one thing I wanna complain about very much is the paddle shifters on this car. The Q50, in fact, all Infinities in the past had wonderful column mounted, you know, magnesium, aluminum, leather wrapped paddles. And this, these cheap plastic paddles here, they just piss me off. It's just serious cost cutting, which is stupid to me because the Q50, the sedan version of this car has those same wonderful magnesium and aluminum paddles that I love so much. And they decided to go with the cheap plastic ones in this car. And when you start using the paddles, you know, the transmission can shift, you know, quick enough, but you know, it would be really nice if this car was a dual clutch, if it had another gear, if it had a freaking manual, for God's sakes, I would love to see this car with a stick shift. Now, because I have the all wheel drive model, 
This does weigh a little bit more. It weighs around 4,000 pounds, so she's a big girl. Uh, and I also hate the fact that Infinity decides to dumb down the tires on the all-wheel drive model. Instead of the staggered width, you know, 265 rears that you get on the rear drive model, um, this has 245s all around on run flat tires, which definitely don't have the grip. Um, these are also all season tires instead of the summer performance tires. I, you know, if you guys don't need the all wheel drive, I highly recommend, you know, for the most performance aspect, go for the rear drive model. Now, one thing I want to talk about with this car is the adaptive or the driver assistance tech. Now, Infinity basically um, likes to claim that theirs is the most technologically advanced all-wheel drive system. Now that's of course debatable. Uh, one thing about this car is you're gonna really remember where this button is. There's a button here on the steering wheel that turns on the adapt, the all the all the nannies basically. And this is the first car that I've driven that has kind of predictive forward collision alert. And honestly, one thing that's really interesting about it is I don't even have to have the adaptive cruise on for it to come to a stop. For example, there's this really slow ass truck in front of me. As you approach the truck, the car brakes for you automatically. And you can actually feel it pushing back on the accelerator pedal as you get too close. And if you get seriously close a lot, it starts to beep, slams on the brakes. It'll come to a full stop, even though I don't have the adaptive cruise on. That is crazy. I mean, when I first tried it, you know, I, I thought like, you know, it's a little intrusive, but to be honest, I think it's something that will literally save your ass if you're not paying attention. And let's be honest, in this day and age, there's a lot of distractive driving that goes along. Now, even though this is the all-wheel drive model, it will, uh, you know, step its rear end out occasionally if you guys are heavy on the gas. And, you know, now I actually have the car on a road that I'm pretty familiar with. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the adapt, the direct adaptive steer technology. Now, first of all, it's a $1,000 option if you guys want the direct adaptive steer. And the way the adapt direct adaptive steer works is there's no actual physical mechanical connection between what the steering wheel is doing and what the front tires are doing. Um, instead, there's an all electronic connection. So every time I turn the wheel, you know, this computer tells the front tires to turn in X amount of degrees, you know, based on how much I'm turning the wheel. Now, some of you may be really scared by that because you know, what happens if the power goes out? Thankfully, Infinity puts a mechanical linkage in there as a backup, but most of the times, actually all the times, unless the power goes out, it's on this electronic, you know, inter or connection. Now, I have to say, Infinity has made steady improvements, and when I first drove the direct adaptive steer last year, I wasn't really a fan, but after a week with the car, I started to get used to it. Of course, I have it in its Sport Plus setting now, uh, which gives it the most feedback, the quickest response, and the one thing Infinity engineers really wanted to do with the direct adaptive steer is they wanted to smooth out you know the overall connection this system is designed to reduce the vibrations that you feel on the road you know and kind of the connection which is honestly i think incorrect i think that you want more feedback the old infinity g had really excellent talkative steering that was just alive uh, and this one by no means is terrible but it's just gonna take a lot of getting used to. It's not something that you can kind of get in and feel the confidence that this car gives you. It doesn't really give you much confidence because you don't really know what the front tires are doing, even though when I turn the wheel, it's quick enough. But the old G had that really communicative, talkative steering where you just knew exactly what the front tires were doing. Um, and it just gave you the confidence to go to go fast. Whereas this, it's gonna take you a little bit of time. One thing that they really you know, improved on though is just the refinement. The, the old G you know, definitely was getting rough around the edges. Now, one thing I do wanna talk about is this car still rides on the same FM platform. They've been using this platform since 2003 when the original G came out. Um, is it time for a replacement? That's debatable. I mean, this car definitely doesn't feel quite as solid as some of the competitors I've driven. Um, the FM platform, though, was pretty much ahead of its time, um, but it still rides in the same 112-inch wheelbase, 184 inches overall. It's about five inches shorter than a G. You can see here, I'm not hitting the brakes. The car is literally doing it for me, uh, which is cool, even though I don't have the adaptive cruise on. And then once the car moves, you floor it. There's a little bit of hesitation. <laughs> but it really gets going. And this is the kind of car that you're gonna be doing way beyond the speed limit quickly. Uh, so the motor is one of the obvious reasons why you wanna go for the Q60 Red Sport model. Let's briefly talk about a little bit about the interior of this car. 
um, because, you know, Infinity obviously made its slight changes for this Q60 over the Q50. There's more stitching on the dash, on the door panels. The steering wheel is new, which by the way, the Q50 will be getting this steering wheel for 2018. But the infotainment system in here is the same. The instrument panel, I really want to complain about that because in my full review, I said, I wish they were red. Honestly, I had a Nissan Rogue a couple weeks ago and these gauges look just like the Rogue's gauges minus like some slightly different font and a different color. So I think Nissan or Infinity needs to completely overhaul the instrument panel and the infotainment system. This is an Infinity for Christ's sakes. It needs to, you know, go a step further. They need to be more technologically advanced. You know, all of its competitors are doing a full LCD screen. They need to dump the two screen layout here, give us Android Auto and CarPlay and just make this one big widescreen. That's really all it needs. You know, the central command controller here works nicely, but you know, sometimes I find that the touch response isn't good enough. The layout is strange and the map graphics, honestly, they're from 2005. So they just really need to be completely overhauled. Now, thankfully, the uh, the entire news about the interior isn't all bad because I love these seats. These are the upgraded, you know, premium leather seats and they're super comfortable, super supportive. My only complaint is there's no cooled seats. You know, at this price point, I really expected some cooled seats in this car. It's just not available even on the Q50. So I would like to see Infinity, you know, make that adjustment, you know, in the future. Now, about the fuel economy, let's talk a little bit about that. Because this car, um, is the red sport model it's rated at you know 1926 if you don't go for all-wheel drive you gain about one mpg on each account uh, i've actually been averaging about 18.8 miles per gallon so right just under 19 and mostly city driving with my lead foot now i did push the mpg up to 28 miles per gallon on a long road trip that i took up to baltimore that's pretty good gas mileage honestly for something like this still lagging behind the competition of a lot of its german competitors so infinity's never really been the strongest for in terms of fuel economy Economy, but they definitely give you a lot in terms of value. Now let's talk a little about pricing because a Q60 base two liter motor um, turbo, it starts at 38,500. That is roughly about four grand cheaper than a lot of its European competitors. Um, now keep in mind, a lot of the Japanese competitors like an a Lexus RC or even the Cadillac ATS Coupe, they are about the same price or cheaper. Um, but you know the Q60 definitely still has that nice value baked in. This is, however, five thousand dollars more than the sedan. You're going to pay more for the coupe styling. Uh, however, even though coupe, people don't really buy coupes anymore, this is a kind of a car that definitely has a cool factor. It, it gets a lot more stares than you know everyone's you know crossovers or sedans that are uh, on the road. Uh, my Red Sport model, the Red Sport in general, starts at fifty-one three. Add two thousand dollars if you want all-wheel drive, so you're looking at fifty-three uh, three, which is actually about a couple thousand dollars cheaper than a lot of its competitors think of the Mercedes AMG C43 that starts at like $55,000 if you guys want something like that <laughs> <laughs> now, my tester has several options on it. It's got a technology package uh, that rolls in the full speed range adaptive cruise control, the lane keep assist, the predictive forward collision alert. It's got that direct adaptive steer for $1,000. It's got like an upgraded interior uh, upholstery uh, with this updated trim. Um, I mean, all in, my tester is going to be costing around 61 grand, 61.5, which is a new level of, you know, expensiveness when it comes to an infinity. Um, and some of you have questioned, is that price you know, worth it? Because you could buy a Mercedes AMG C43, a lightly optioned one, or you could get an RC350, you can get uh, an Audi S5 Coupe, a BMW 440i. Those start around the $55,000 range as well, and they're gonna be around the mid 60s fully loaded. So not much more than this Infiniti, for example. However, one thing that Infiniti does have are very, very excellent lease deals. And this is something you guys need to check on your own because um, Right now in this lease in the US, what I was finding is the lease on this car, this particular model is around $4.99 a month for 39 months with like 4,800 down. That's a pretty, you know, not expensive amount of money for a car like this. Uh, and keep in mind, this is for the top of the line Red Sport 400. If you guys go to like a base Q Q60, they start at like around three three eighty nine a month for a lease for 39 months with like three grand down. So the lease is definitely attractive. I mean, that's the same kind of money that you could spend on like a midsize car and you could literally get a high performance luxury coupe or a Q50 sedan, which is honestly even cheaper than this car. 
uh, if you guys want the practicality of four doors and don't mind you know losing the excellent you know the sleek styling of the coupe uh, with all that said at that price you know that makes the q60 and q50 very very attractive and i've seen my local dc area infinity dealers discounting this car between you know six to eight grand for the coupe and as much as twelve thousand dollars off the sedan because you know that 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 point you're looking at a car that is you know very very tempting especially with considering how much horsepower you get you know when you guys go for this car now how does the car feel in general to me the q50 and q60 feel a little bit incomplete um, the interior tech needs work um, the ride quality uh, is you know compliant enough but it is a little bit on the firmer side at times it's not the quietest uh, vehicle in the segment uh, and it's missing some tech features that I would really like to see. And there's definitely a lot of aspects of this car you know, that remind me of a Nissan. However, the engine is what they, the company basically got right. But it seems to me like the Q50 and Q60 need a little bit more time in the oven to completely bake out you know, the Nissan sharing, the Nissan feel, and give this more of a unique Infiniti luxury high-tech high-tech uh, environment that I would really love to see Infiniti do in the future. So, with all that said, if you guys are in the market for a luxury compact coupe like this, and you're looking for the most bang for your buck, the most horsepower for dollar, the Q60 coupe is definitely one that needs to be at the top of your list. Just for, keep in mind that some of its European competitors, they will be more expensive, but they feel more like a complete car, like the entire package. And if that's more important for you, you may wanna go look at its, you know, its European competitors. However, if you know, the most horsepower for dollar is more important for you, make sure you put this one at the top of your list. I hope you guys have enjoyed my full updated review on this 2017 Q60 Red Sport 400 all-wheel drive. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.